Dakota would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. The Beginner's Guide is a rather intimate game. That's one reason I really enjoyed it. It spoke directly to the player, not to the character that the player is controlling. I'd like to clarify that this video is my interpretation of the game, its meaning, and the characters. And also, this is a review, but not really in the normal sense. This is a game that looks basically like shit when reviewed normally. However, while it's not full of spoilers in the typical sense, my interpretation will probably completely color how you play the game. So if you plan on playing it, skip this video for now and come back later. The fact that the real life developer's name is Davey and the in-game character and narrator is named Davey is likely the cause of much confusion about what is right, what is wrong, or what is true or false. And that's what makes this game so great to me and also why it has some pretty strong negativity towards it. In my interpretation of the game and its meaning, I believe there are to be two parties who will really enjoy it. Those who like simply abstract and experimental work, and those that will resonate with one of the underlying meanings presented by the game. You may be someone who likes it because it's interesting, or you might be someone who likes it because it explains a feeling or experience well. And I will say it right here, this game is on the same level as Gone Home, for why it works for some, and why it works for others. I know that Coda really liked this game. Of all of his work, actually, this was the only one that he called me up to ask me to come over and look at it. This was during a period of a few months where he was, like, grossly happy all the time, just walked around with a constant smile on his face. And here, I think, is why. When you break down why people really personally like each one, it comes down to personal experience. If you're someone who, quote-unquote, plays games for gameplay or mechanics, I can almost guarantee you won't like either one because there really isn't much in terms of gameplay in either one. And the gameplay there is primitive and frankly shallow. You will find them boring, you will find them dull, and you will find that they have no depth. And that is where the market of these two titles hits some problems. The Beginner's Guide to me seems like it resonates with one primary audience. People who do creative work for their own self-worth. People who do creative work as a means of expression or to simply create and explore ideas they have. If you do creative work as a job, I don't think you probably qualify. If you do it because you enjoy it and it brings value to your life and you wake up every morning thinking about the cool drawings, paintings, music, images, photos, writing, games, or videos you want to make that day, then I think you fit. The fact is, in my opinion, honestly, both characters in the Beginner's Guide are Davy. Coda is Davy's internal creative drive. He was making games for his own personal worth for a while, which later is when he discovered Davy, or rather, when Davy discovered Coda. Davy, to me, represents the normal personality of Davy Redden. Redden, I'm going to mess that up throughout this video. The normal outside of a person. The personality who interfaces with the world, other users, gamers, etc. We all kind of have a Davy the primary personality, the personality that is outwardly driven, and is fueled by validation and praise. Only problem is that to Coda, Davy's internal creative machine, validation doesn't do anything. Praise does nothing. If anything, both of these things are things that Coda and the creative machine will run away from. Before Davy met Coda, Coda made games for himself. He made games about being trapped, being confined, lacking control or authority. This, however, doesn't mean Coda felt that way. It's easy to say that Coda was feeling that way, hence he made games showing that, but you can want to express something without feeling that way. Conversely, some people do use their creative outlet to express their feelings. Davy to me is that outside mentality, wanting to share and take Coda's work and make it something others would enjoy. Unfortunately, that's not how it always works. Sometimes you need to make something for you only, and you can't let anyone else touch it. I think this game is an interactive diary or journal entry about Davy in reference to the Stanley Parable. Davy Reedon has in the past written about his intense stress and anxiety and dealing with so much praise and validation. He loved it, and he hated it. 
I think Davy Reardon created Davy and Coda to represent his two sides of his personality. Coda is the one who wants to make games how he wants, and Davy is the one who loves the validation and all the praise. Davy Reardon mentions how he loved and also loathed the awards to his game. Because while he loved the validation, it brought so much attention and his internal Coda hated that. Later in the game, Davy talks about him showing Coda's work to others and them loving it. And Davy felt validated and he loved that, while Coda did not. The more Davy showed his work, the more Coda worked on new games and the more he was gone from the spotlight. This back and forth is the struggle that I think Davy was dealing with in all the attention the Stanley Parable was receiving. To bring it back to my main point, I do think that the game is describing a real struggle in Davy Reardon because I think all creative personalities go through this. What I'm doing right now is going against one of the main big points the game is making. Don't use the creation to define the creator. However, I don't feel I'm pointing out any flaws or saying someone is broken. I think that, in a wonderful way, Davy demonstrated the very strange and sometimes painful process of starting out in a creative outlet, getting better at it, trying to find meaning in what you do, getting frustrated that there sometimes is no meaning, and feeling that without meaning, what's the point? I think it also nicely points out on our desire to share can be very dangerous when sharing our very personal media. You made something you really liked, but you think some people may want it different, but it's still yours. You're not really under any obligation to change it. As I wrote this script, I deleted many paragraphs of things that I thought were important for me personally to express for my own sake but I was changing it based upon my own expectations of what people were looking for. Last night, I read almost the entire Galactic Cafe blog. It starts in 2011 when the Stanley Parable mod launched, and it ran to roughly the beginning of 2014. And in that, I could see the representations of Davy's personality in this game. He mentions having arguments with himself late at night, trying to meet people, feeling confused when people say he's a good writer when he himself thinks he's not, he mentions the sort of voice that tells him what to write and he puts it down. I think this ties well with the machine, the machine that stopped working at times. He mentions progressively spending more and more time on each piece of the game, and times just wanting to destroy it all, thinking it wasn't good enough. He also had a really great satirical post about not giving into peer pressure. Here's a small part. As a highly recognized celebrity game developer, I'm under constant pressure from the people around me to modify and make additions to my game simply to serve their own needs. These are people who think only of themselves and have little or no consideration for art. They might not even know what art means." Unquote. Though I think in a desire to appease, he wants to add these changes in, but he's fighting his internal coda who just wants to make what he feels is art. I think it's important to say that I don't think Davy Reardon is giving a lesson here. Certainly not a lesson to everyone else, but just sharing the kind of feeling and emotion with dealing with a creative outlet and expectations. If you're a creative person and that creative outlet defines you, I think this game will make a whole lot of sense to you. Davy is speaking about himself. Coda is Davy's internal creative machine. That machine, at times, stopped working. The machine that Coda complained about, that stopped working. When the thing that defines you and keeps you looking forward to the next thing stops working, in a sense, you stop working. It's hard to explain the kind of frustration and depression that can arise from your creative machine stalling. That is something that this game shows really well to people who know it, while perhaps being obfuscated to people who don't really know it. Opening up and sharing your personal creative work is a massive step for some people. That massive step can completely shut down that machine. And even with the validation that your own personal Davy may get, that doesn't mean you're ready with ideas. Coda, though, wasn't necessarily running out of ideas. Coda itself didn't want validation. Validation doesn't fuel the creative machine. Validation drives Davy and Davy needs more validation. Davy became worried about Coda, or his own creativity, and projected that. The creative machine stalled eventually when it's pushed to progress, when maybe it doesn't need to. In that sense, as much as validation is great, 
that doesn't necessarily drive someone to be more creative. It probably just makes them desire that they were more creative more of the time, at least in my experience. I think that the beginner's guide as a title seems to describe this whole process pretty well. The Stanley Parable was either Davy's first game or one of his very early games. He didn't have much experience in how those things kind of grew. It became a viral success even when it was just a mod. Hundreds of thousands of people downloaded it. People emailed him praise and complaints and some hate. The full Steam release game just did that a second time. Davy was learning how to handle all this, and he didn't have much of a guide. Like I said earlier in the video, the beginner's guide speaks to people in the same way Gone Home speaks to another group. It resonates with different people based upon their personality and their own life experiences. It's not surprising that many people will play this, get bored, and feel like the game is just some guy talking about his weird friend's shitty source mods. For me, it speaks directly in an interactive way the mind and thought process of someone who likes to create and express themselves while still trying to share that. You want to be alone and work or create, but your other half wants to be validated and share what you've made. And the depressing nature that the game places on Coda, what I believe to be Davy's creative drive, is really quite relatable. If anything goes wrong and your own personal creativity is questioned, or your creativity drive or machine has an issue, you kind of clam up. You don't really want anyone to help or try to solve anything. There really isn't a solution to fix anything. It just takes time to come back. I'm not really in a position to say whether the beginner's guide is good or bad, because I think that goes against one of the underlying points the game was making. I don't even know if my interpretation is even in the right universe. All I know is, I really fucking loved The Beginner's Guide.